scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It says, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out. The word bring you out there is the word deliverance. I will deliver you from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. So we see different expressions here that relate to deliverance. The Lord is saying, I will bring you out from their burdens. I will read you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment why this is because of what happened in chapter 1 and verse 11 let's go to chapter 1 and 11 same exodus chapter 1 and verse 11 it says therefore they did set over them taskmasters listen carefully the purpose of the deliverance in chapter 6 is because of a situation that we find in chapter 1 that therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities Python and Ramesses all of the gods of Egypt so they were they were subject to a system of labor a system of bondage and a burden what was the assignment to build cities for other gods are we together they were mandated as an act of affliction to build treasure cities where they kept the 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 booties that they had gotten from war and from oppressing neighboring nations and then to also build different tabernacles places of rest for all their gods and their idols and the lord said that i will bring you deliverance so before there is need for deliverance there must have been a system of bondage are we together that subjects men that subjects territories that subjects both animate and inanimate things to some sort of danger some sort of oppression and so on and so forth are we together let's look at colossians chapter one paul is teaching the church in Colossae. colossians chapter one verse 13 and 14 then i would like to teach something very briefly here before we move on it says who hath delivered us talking about jesus now who hath delivered us from the power of darkness everybody say power of darkness notice the bible didn't just say he delivered us from darkness he delivered us from the power of darkness that means darkness is powerful darkness is a force it is very unwise to believe that um, all of these spiritual forces are not powerful we only say they are powerless relative to the superiority of God's intelligence and the power that is now in motion through the Christ are we together when you are contrasting darkness relative to the excellency of God's power his all-surpassing victory then it is valid to consider Satan and all his cohorts as powerless. But relative to the spiritual advantage, 
the plane from which these spirits operate it is very childish and immature to believe that they do not wield any kind of power and force on their own even a normal human being who can access the realm of the spirit any dimension higher than the three-dimensional realm has an advantage over one who does not sustain that uh, that ability are we together now i have taught you that any dimension you can access outside of the three-dimensional realm will provide you an advantage over the natural person scientists would tell us that even lower animals that we call lower have the ability to perceive danger and perceive reality that the normal man who is unrefined are we together cannot perceive is that true we see dogs we see animals respond to people some of them have very superior sense organs these are beings that are not empowered by any kind of spirit whatsoever yet they wield an advantage so it is it is i'm, I'm just buttressing on this to help us understand because you see one of the greatest challenges with the body of christ is we just copy everything we know we never take out time to allow the spirit of revelation to break down the truths that have been passed down from generation to generation just because we read it in a book and a senior man of god advocated it or certain people that represent pillars to the body most of them had the understanding but most of us just receive it as head knowledge and we teach it in bible schools so most believers just have the chaff of that knowledge there is no substance that backs up their conviction are we together so darkness is powerful paul is not ashamed to tell us in fact here's how jesus said it he said behold i give you power are we together that's luke 10 19 can we just run there and then return back to colossians luke chapter 10 and verse 19 behold i give you power listen the word power there is not the greek word dunamis is the word exousia is the word authority right uh, is is a is an authorization to legislate rather than the ability to by yourself cause change are we together behold i give you exousia authority to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over how many all the power jesus himself is acknowledging that the enemy has power but that he has given you an ability to manifest and legislate above that power and then it says nothing shall by any means hurt you the only reason why nothing shall hurt you is because you are operating from a dimension that is higher than the existing that means if something is hurting you it means you are not accessing and working with that power or you do not have knowledge on how to put it to work are we together now god bless you so back to colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 i hope we are together who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and then the bible says hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son 14 in whom we have redemption through the blood even the forgiveness of sins so he's telling us the basis for that translation that the the possibility to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son has happened on the basis of redemption and that by the blood are we together now so salvation is a form of deliverance the salvation that has been given believers today that we enjoy the bible does not just call it redemption alone the bible calls it deliverance what then is deliverance write this down i did my best to scrabble an intelligent definition that will capture everything that i believe the word of god um says about deliverance so let's let's try and see if my definition makes sense ready deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of christ or jesus christ don't worry take it gradually i will repeat myself deliverance 
is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ I'm going to continue I'm just breaking so that you write let's take it again deliverance is a system for experientially underline the word experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ can I continue over Satan comma demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan demons and all the powers of darkness over Satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives by this definition we see that deliverance for a believer and the scriptural approach to deliverance is much more than the activity of physical exertion like a present day fight deliverance is concerned with establishing making a reality that has been finished to become your experience here and now are we together so that deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of christ jesus over satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives i wrote something small here that deliverance um and then by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in christ today is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it listen carefully our approach to the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare has to do with establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting to create it it's important that you have this understanding and this revelation alone will make all the difference in your approach to the subject of deliverance and the subject of spiritual warfare that you and i should approach the subject of deliverance from a perspective that seeks to establish and manifest the victory that is already wrought through the substitutionary sacrifice of christ rather than an attempt to physically exert energy to fight and win as though it was a product of your own exertion i think this is this in itself i can dwell all night explaining this because this may be the reason why many many well-meaning individuals and by extension deliverance ministries get little or no victory out of the the abundance of the physical exertions many of us here may be victims of that experience so we are not talking about a state here where you fight for victory in terms of physically confronting satan one on one as it were i will tell you where that revelation came from are we blessed so say after me deliverance for the believer has to do with establishing and manifesting authority over darkness rather than fighting for it are you getting the point now let me dramatize something here please come doctor come watch this you stand here and um, hold my book this is your inheritance this is your possession please look up i want to dramatize something that will help us you stand here and then ah they are all ladies where are the gentlemen sam come now watch this the bible says and you have to understand this is where i think many people find confusion when the bible when the bible speaks look at this very carefully god speaks from the standpoint of eternity 
he does not speak as if he's talking within the frame of time are we together so in the speakings of god he always speaks with the expression of completion which is not a lie but then the dynamics of converting the prophetic realities that have been finished in christ to now become the experience of the saints is where there is confusion are we together so the bible tells us from the foundation of the earth the lamb was slain but there are still people going to hell today are we together if the lord is to talk to you now if you were to see jesus jesus will look at you and tell you you should not be crying financially because you are walking in abundance that's how he talks but then you will think that he's being rude and sarcastic to you because at the point he's talking to you you may not even have five naira he cannot speak otherwise his his viewpoint spans he's not dimensional in his approach if he breaks himself to be dimensional it's an act of his mercy to help man understand him are we together that's why he's called alpha omega the word and there was just an expression to help us comprehend he is both the beginning and the end so to him there is nothing like beginning and end in his dimension that does not exist are you getting my point now so god can speak to you and say emeka finish the house by tomorrow whereas you don't even have land that's god speaking emeka finish the house by tomorrow and as at the time he's talking your landlord is waiting with a policeman in front of you and god will never talk about the landlord emeka i have given you your house and your key you will even see it in a vision god giving you key and you say thank you and then wake up from the vision with a, a rude knock from the door by an angry landlord now how do i reconcile what i have seen because god will not change he speaks once it is only you that hears twice the first hearing is the hearing of the flesh the second hearing is now the hearing of the spirit that brings understanding once have i spoken but you need to hear twice because the first hearing is from a carnal point but then the holy spirit now helps you to have the ear that the bible says he that hath an ear the second kind of ear you now hear from the spirit the hearing that brings understanding that's why the bible says faith comes by hearing but there is a superior hearing hearing now not just by your senses by the word of god are you understanding what i'm teaching you now so this guy is now confused and he's saying in the realm of the spirit the lord spoke to me and said i have given you abundance yet nothing is happening and then the lord appears to you and you are trying to say oh lord look at all the demons and the witches and then the lord tells you something like my grace is sufficient or my victory is still in force and you wake up and you are like oh god how can you be speaking like this whereas in experience that's what paul was trying to teach the church in hebrew he was quoting from psalm 5 what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him the bible says you have made him lower than elohim are we together you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and that in doing that you did not leave anything under his feet but he creates a dimension he said but as it is today we do not yet see experience so you must be able to balance between the prophetic communications of the spirit the prophetic communications of the word and the experiential manifestation of the same in your life otherwise you will die like a chicken quoting the word of god between the prophetic speakings of god and the manifestation in your life there is a mystery that connects them and those who have this are the ones who become possessors it is your possession in christ but it takes an understanding of what to do to make it your possession here forever oh lord thy word is settled where it never said in your life thy word is settled in heaven it will take engaging these mysteries to make the word settled in your life ah your help has come this this is already a deliverance for someone because for many years you kept jumping 
oh my god i see victory jesus said it is finished everything is all right wonderful amazing my life is full of beauty and glory you are not lying but after 10 years 15 years your father said this thing and while he was saying it sickness was eating him up till he died I, I don't want you to feel bad i'm not trying to be sarcastic are we together you said this yourself and after 10 years there's nothing in your life that demonstrates the victory of christ and some out of that frustration will just say this is a lie no it's not a lie forever your word is settled but to know how to make it our experience one of the mysteries that have been allocated by the wisdom of god to make spiritual realities that are established in the christ to manifest in our life is called the mystery of deliverance are you getting the point now it is not the only kingdom mystery i've taught you many of them we are approaching one of them now this gentleman wants to possess his possession this is a son of jacob he's read obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 he's believed are we together now because the bible says whoever believes our reports the arm of the lord will be made manifest in his life now this brother believes but every time standing between him and that inheritance just turn to face me sam is an obstacle this brother has read in the bible that we have been translated colossians 1 13. it didn't say we will be the bible says we have been but he's seen something that is is a cause in his life watch this this guy knows the word of god i hope you understand that he has believed he's a worker in church and he has seen that every time people get to the edge the edge of breakthrough something happens now he said in the name of jesus i don't believe this i am exempted and to his shock regardless of that confession his life is still a victim of it that thing happens as if the thing didn't hear him are you getting what i'm saying now please listen very carefully okay this guy comes from a family where everybody is barren i'm sorry sorry for this are we together everyone is barren and now he makes up his mind no it is god that makes everyone a fruitful i mean he can make the wilderness to be fruitful you know children are a heritage from the lord now he has confessed that he has done that well and it is true but in experience now he gets married and to his shock he finds out that his wife cannot get pregnant and he says, no the devil is just joking let me just release my faith and you watch what happens one month becomes one year becomes two years becomes decades becomes 20 years and the man is angry by 75 and he's no longer believing in jesus and when you come to him as a zealous young man what giant from koinonia man of god since i was blind say if you don't get out of here i will slap you i spent 60 years forcing the word to work my conclusion is that god alongside all the scammers called preachers are liars some of us that person i just described may be your father may be your mother they will show you pictures of them and reinhard bonke when he was young and tell you i and tear it in your presence and say i don't believe all that junk again the frustration that comes you come from a family that is full of poverty and goodness you found the truth and you are happy you are rejoicing over it and all of a sudden you find out that you are now a graduate and your elder sisters are looking at you and say we graduated 15 years ago none of us the highest among us just got a contract job for one week and it was over and you come and say it's because you know how arrogant we are young people when we are just touching revelation we mock at others and laugh and say oh sisters it's because of the church you are going to me i'm going to koinonia wait and see what happens then you are a graduate and you celebrate the first christmas as a graduate with no job it touches you and you pretend i don't know i think god is working something powerful after you dance and sing and do what you know to do by five years you now sit with them in a discussion and you're like ah, ah. so this this thing is true this is why my mother was not happy this is why my father was not happy this series is saving you many of you many of you are already going through what i'm saying now and if you don't open your eyes and your ears to listen to the way out you will be very frustrated how about men of god 
like our sister has shared who come from terrible families with idol worship and then they get born again filled with the holy spirit and begin to walk in strange miracles and start a ministry and say oh god god forbid i mean i used to be from a family of idol worship now i'm free and the guy begins his ministry after five years he finds out that the members go down everything goes down an attack comes on him and the ministry and he goes to tell his uncle and the uncle laughs and say why do you think i stopped being a pastor because i was once a pastor were you told he said no so well let me educate you i was once a pastor the crusade that happened in this city i was the chairman organizing committee the same thing that happened you would try to argue and say uncle my own is not like your own he said you he says it's the same thing it's there and then many of you now just like i was stand and you are confused you say no no let me go back to the bible and you still see it there and have translated us from the kingdom of darkness and have translated us not will translate and have translated us many of you rush and come to us men of god and say sir i read here and have translated me i believed everything you said why is my life like this listen to what we tell you you don't have faith or you really don't believe it i if you be, look at me i'm rich i'm entering a jeep so he said i'm okay money can deceive to think just because you have a jeep and you have a nice watch you are free no there are many other dimensions you don't have to be delivered to be rich there are many people under yokes of darkness that are millionaires so be careful lest you use money the reason is because money has a very funny way of making your needs met so it can lie to you to think just because you don't see any obvious need yet you are free we have used money for a long time in the body to mean that i am free and say what's the proof look at my estate look at five cars look at a flourishing church does that look like someone under oppression my helpers hi 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 reading volumes of books i went to almost every bookstore i could find and gathered books i read books to prepare myself on fire i was seeing the power of god move through my life i was having encounters and then to my greatest shock in the midst of that spiritual height demons come to me regardless i mean i started quoting scriptures from secondary school you would receive awards there were 52 scriptures if you could quote they would give you an award i don't know how many times i got that award and you would think how then should i hide the word in my heart to quote 52 scriptures every year new ones i'm not talking of old ones i could quote chapters of the bible and here comes demons into my room and i'm shouting in jesus name the blood of jesus and they are not moving i'm saying in the name of jesus i'm a child of god and they are not moving <sighs> who will i tell this who will believe me god are you have you suddenly become weak listen when you see me just stand to talk and demons are crying find out what happened i want to show you where the problem is these demons will press my neck the anointing didn't leave me the anointing is still there the same way elisha died of sickness with the healing anointing still in his bones why didn't the anointing work while he was deteriorating to death yet the anointing raised a dead body who didn't have faith the dead body was not begging please raise me just he came in contact with bones couldn't the anointing bring back flesh like Ezekiel 
37 because we know it's a possibility so why didn't the anointing bring back the prophet again there are mysteries in this kingdom what you do not know you can argue to your detriment it will smash you into pieces like it's happening to many people we are just not honest to confront truth until we find light for me i i pray that god will make you like me i don't hear yes sir i keep searching until the truth is found many of you you see when the holy spirit refuses to allow an answer satisfy you is because there is a grace in that area he wants you to reveal to the body so you come to a man of god you come to me or anybody and we just give you explanations uh, to manage our ego and the holy spirit will say no no with all honor that's not the answer he's telling you find out so that you can help someone if i didn't pass through what i passed through now i probably will wave this teaching like many are waving and say look let's just focus on jesus and you are focusing on jesus but you are seeing that something is wrong everything the word of god declares is true it is the system for accessing it we do not know and what we have been taught is not wrong but is largely incomplete this series is to give you the balance you hear testimonies of people already look at the pastors with their churches look at the gentlemen that came someone from us just gets up another person just sends 4.5 you think the person doesn't have relatives in need doesn't he have brothers and sisters who are looking for thirty thousand? And he can't help them and then come somewhere i told you you're what? Ah, oh God, oh God. just follow me by now this brother is frustrated oh god give me my possession and he comes and he says man of god i'm still waiting and i said don't worry abraham waited 25 years what what are you complaining about a small boy come on just be paid and i start getting angry you are getting rude you are challenging my anointing my anointing is angry with you i will curse you you see that and the brother leaves me quietly and goes back and he knows something is wrong i'm not being sarcastic i love the body listen carefully there must be an answer to this that answer is what will bring about the experience of possessing your possession that even even the critic in your life will know that the hand of god this brother has caught this this sister has caught this i prayed to god eh? and i told god i said by the time lord we finish this series let us hear of testimonies that people will stand up and say no this is this is if not because the person sharing it is there we will think it's a lie or stage manage i told you last week you can know that deliverance has happened to a person and a family by the speed that's where you know that those realities have been piled up in the spirit for many years and it's usually an avalanche overnight doors liftings all kinds of things happen do you believe that a woman who should have had six children and has been barren for six years or for 10 years or 20 years you think it's one child that will come at once right. by the time god shifts that barrier you will be surprised the kind of testimonies that will surprise you you believe that a man that has been grounded by witchcraft for decades the only testimony he will get is a new job that gives him thirty thousand. when will he recover no that's not the kind of testimony that follows deliverance the kind of testimony that follows deliverance is a sign and a wonder God makes a statement that I can in delivering you restore the years the canker worm the palmer worm you should be married 20 years ago but then I move and give you triplets two times six children at once but upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance whatever it is and when that happens the sons of jacob shall possess their possession hallelujah so this brother is standing then he takes an aggressive step watch this and then his eyes is open in the spirit watch this and he sees a spirit appear to him and tell him you will never make it but the bible says behold i give you power 
so satan where did you even get the audacity to show up in my room remember your room is anointed remember there's a bottle of anointing oil in that room don't forget remember there's a communion set in that room are you getting what i'm saying remember while the demon is talking to you a bible is on your bed have you forgotten sometimes a worship song is even playing yet he shows up no invitation he didn't knock the door and talks nonsense to you and all of a sudden he leaves who will i tell this to i can't tell apostle because i, I, I will keep quiet and that's how many of us have been keeping quiet as a man of god you finish preaching in a crusade and go back in the night and a spirit comes to molest you to even sleep with you you get up in the morning who will i tell this embarrassing thing and while you are sitting someone comes for counseling counseling number one man of god there is a demon that comes to sleep with me every night you almost want to run away because that's your own experience too it will shock you that you will lay hands on the person and he will start manifesting and be free and you just wave the person and then return back and say my god now oh god who will deliver me Ay 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 Ebeniza Ebeniza Ay 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 Ebeniza my pastor Hallelujah Please go and sit down guys let's talk now why why does it look like there is a an extreme difficulty for the saints to make manifest the realities remember the bible says he that did not spare his son are we bible students that he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us will he not with him freely freely mark the word freely give us how many things then the bible says that they that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness what is their heritage they shall reign yet we do not see this thing happening that means something is wrong so deliverance is one of the mysteries that was allocated by the wisdom remember the bible says that it should be made to principalities and powers the manifold not one fold manifold the multifaceted wisdom of god deliverance is one of the expressions of the multifaceted wisdom of god so deliverance is concerned with experientially establishing and manifesting the victory and authority that we have in the christ rather than physically fighting for it let me tell you where this fighting mentality came from and of course the bible says we should fight the fight of faith and all of that but i mean this kind of fight have you seen people go to sleep and they tell you ah i i fought and this and in a dream you saw yourself fighting the victory was almost there are we together then somebody woke you you get up with anger and annoyance and say i was about to, to stab the last snake and you woke me what kind of you are you are a wicked person watch this and then you go back to sleep again and sometimes the battle continues it is because of the way spiritual things act themselves that we have believed that just because in a dream or in a vision are we together some of you even wake up from that encounter feeling physically exerted so because of that scenario of acting we now believe that warfare is about physically trying to fabricate victory regardless of what you see or the way the expressions come in the spirit the word of god remains true that christ has won the victory are you are you with me now that's where the confusion comes from and especially for those who work very strongly in the prophetic ministry 
they have helped in no way to amplify this com this co this confusion because what you see if not balanced with mental transformation and a good word base you will confuse people i can stand right now and make her stand and look at doctor in a vision and in that vision i can be seeing him inside a pit are we together and now i say doctor you are in a pit it's not a lie but that is just a prophetic symbolism to mean bondage are we together by the time i engage in whatever mystery the victory may show as him coming out from the pit so over many years of seeing different scenarios i may now write a book or i may now propose a theology are we together where people now start physically fighting to manifest their victory and this is why satan reigns over us because he's a master of the sense realm he knows that what you can see will challenge you let me ask you a question what happened to you last week with your night prayer are you not shocked at the level of attack that amplified you see that it happened for many of us right i told you it will happen because satan is the master of the sense realm you wake up in the night and sleep and go back and the same experience of them oppressing you supposedly happens again some of you as soon as you finish you went back in fact for some of you that activity has been on break since you you became on serious with god but now that you just started a little prayer all of a sudden it came now let me tell you satan will use your senses and tell you the word of god claims this if god were so powerful where is it then you will now dance to the realm of the senses and say kai that means let me go back to sleep in jesus name i must go back for the battle to come you are already defeated there's no possibility of victory under that condition in this kingdom the only instrument listen carefully the only the saints don't fight our warfare is the warfare of taking advantage of the forces of the spirit allocated to us the force of the word the force of the blood the name of jesus and all of these mysteries listen very carefully to enforce i repeat enforce if the purpose of your engaging those things is to create a physical fight you are defeated already the devil will eat you up and, and spit you watch this jesus is standing haven't walked on water to come peter says if it be thou listen carefully now bid me come and jesus says come peter gets up and started walking on water are we together now do you think while peter was walking on the water the water stopped being boisterous it still continued but it's just that because his focus was on jesus are we together that connection so the power that kept him on that water was not in his legs it was on the gaze of jesus are we together now the moment peter didn't stop walking on water he only shifted his gaze to somewhere else and his legs started going down for as long as his gaze was on jesus whatever the storm did now he's looking at jesus did not suddenly make the water quiet it was still boisterous but he was surprised that the water was not moving him the element for the victory was his connection with the eyes of jesus not his ability to walk well for as long as his legs remained but he turned his attention the bible said he saw that's what satan wants you to see satan is a master over the sense realm if he can deviate your focus to make you see the bulkiness of the challenges he will bring your faith down and strike you in a way that will affect you are we together god bless you thank you doctor we discussed access points last week that biblically speaking there are three main access points systems of authorization that satan uses that demons use all occults all spiritism and any kind of extra physical manifestation of evil thrives upon these three platforms number one covenants covenants we discussed it last week i'm just giving us a quick review number one covenants a covenant is the most powerful of the three 
because i told you that the covenant is a system of authorization and that system of authorization can go beyond an individual that's what makes it powerful my obedience may affect me alone are we together but a covenant can allow me to do something um look at this dr shown is here with his wife shade are we together if i ask doctor and i say sir i want to come to your house and he says no then i turn to his wife and say shade i want to come to your house and she says yes the covenant of marriage are we together if obeyed properly i have a right to come to that house and if he quarrels me and say i thought i didn't invite you i say no your wife who has also become one with you allowed me you see why covenants are powerful because when you see satan veto certain things about you and comes is because he knows someone else you are connected to has authorized him are you getting what i'm saying now the same way in israel today i am not aware of many israelis who have come by themselves to call upon jehovah the god of abraham isaac and jacob in fact if you go to visit israel those who take christians on a tour the jewish people are shocked that christians are crying when they see some of these monuments to them is tourism they are waiting to be paid and they see it just come so this is the cave where my savior laid and you kneel down and the jew there is in shock what kind of people are these you are being emotional. You go near the wailing wall and you are crying and wailing for your sins and choking prayer points at the wall and the guy is waiting for you to finish and just pay him his money. Yet, in the midst of it, you try to kill that Israeli and a covenant he's not aware of will arise and defend him. What kind of unfair thing is this? They farm on a mountain that should not grow. Yet, there is something that makes the earth to increase to them remember that person doesn't believe in jesus yet when god looks at them he sees abraham and sees the covenant the most feared nation on earth a little nation but indestructible by a mystery that even themselves they cannot understand the rabbinical institutes have spent decades studying what is the secret behind the immunity of the nation of Israel. Israel is my firstborn. God has made a covenant with the firstborn, the apple of his eyes, that he will kill and slay any nation because of a covenant. And it's an everlasting covenant that he has made. So when your grandfather was draining the blood of a goat near fire you were in the loins of prophecy but then he was saying look protect us and we contract this entire estate to you watch this then all of a sudden like i said last week some white missionaries from america just came and they said what are you guys doing they say for 150 years we have been serving this shrine say no no we bring you good news of glad tidings jesus has come this is old we present to you jesus and then you embrace the gospel of salvation and you felt that peace in your heart you were happy you were glad i have received jesus two weeks later the missionaries started dying one by one remember they are the ones who got you born again and you were happy two weeks later your farm stopped producing as usual your peace was still in you you were happy and you loved jesus then you decided to come together to pray and while you prayed and prayed and prayed you just found out that one of your child started running mad on the street listen brothers and sisters there are seven gospels jesus left with the church i'm not about to preach it now but the gospel of salvation is only one of them there is the gospel of the kingdom it is the gospel of the kingdom that reveals to you the keys of the kingdom they are not called the keys of salvation they is the gospel of the kingdom how you engage these mysteries to manifest that which is finished from the foundations of the earth i hate to be a bearer of bad news but it's just that many of us are not honest enough to look at our lives 
and look at our dear parents and look at our siblings one of our dear ladies she might be here I remember it was during was it during Christmas or early New Year this year her mother and, and, and I'm sorry to just have to talk about it but her mother a godly woman was standing in church sir just like everybody wonderful woman of God in the presence of everybody looking at her in the house of God with the anointing of the Spirit she fell down face forward in the presence of everybody and died right there prayer warriors came and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened while that would happen her father paralyzed completely paralyzed completely in this place I'm not talking of another place when I heard that I said this is it this is it I must teach this this year this is it now do you know the family of that lady will almost beat you if you go to them with arrogance and say ladies and gentlemen look I don't know what you believe but that lady I think there are few people I know that pray like that lady in terms of consistency of the spiritual discipline of prayer what could be wrong what are we not seeing when Jesus walked the earth it was not like that the invincibility of his victory was incontestable what is wrong with our understanding So covenant number two I taught us that the second access point is ignorance don't forget ignorance ignorance is a force in the spirit just like faith ignorance is a force it can cause things to happen in fact the Bible calls a certain class of the demonic organogram rulers of darkness that means their domain of dominion is every time there is lack of illumination when they come to a life or they come to a physical territory where there is lack of spiritual illumination their dominion is activated they are called rulers of the darkness of this world not another world so they search for everywhere there is darkness in this world and that becomes their jurisdiction of authority Archbishop Benson Idahosa was explaining the power of light and its ability to conquer darkness and he said that there was darkness in a land it was a story there was darkness in a land for many weeks and the people in that land went to the sun to complain s-u-n and they said son please help us there is darkness in our land and the sun said you mean it darkness everywhere he said yes and then it the said the sun said okay i'm coming to see the darkness and when the sun came there for three weeks and found out there was no darkness he said i've been you people are wasting my time i've been here for three weeks and i can't find the darkness and they said for as long as you are here the darkness cannot come so there is light the light shines the light shines notice the bible never says the light appears in darkness uh -uh. it is not the appearance of light that takes away darkness it is the shining it is the shining not just the appearance the light shines in darkness the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together number three disobedience disobedience having the readiness to judge all obedience all disobedience when your obedience is complete disobedience authorizes the gates of darkness the gates of hell to prevail over the sins very quickly let's look at levels of satanic influences blessed be the name of the Lord is God speaking to someone tonight there are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints there is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in Christ 
but there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though you are in Christ let's look at it very quickly number one the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception write it down deception the first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all is deception and this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever it was paul who was speaking um, um which of the church now help me it says galatia the church in galatia it says oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you let's look at a few scriptures very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and verse 13 if we can run through it very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll, look, we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and 13 media please help us second peter chapter 2 and then we'll look at revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 the bible says and many shall follow their pernicious ways deceptive ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of the bible is talking of a kind of deception here are we together now i don't want to go into other uh, more modern versions so that you see what pernicious there is but just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here go to verse 12 please 12 and then 13. it says but these Paul is really, I mean, Apostle Peter here is really angry. And he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive. He said, but this, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. He says, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption that means that believers have been made to be deceived by the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand there are many people who would have been delivered but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself he's not being deceived took them away from the lights that would have blessed them the bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand there is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church and there are many of us men of God who are victims of this there are many believers who would not have been in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship and we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds that derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty they followed us away from their breakthrough let's look at the second revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 again media please help us very quickly we are still looking at deception three verses here i found just to explain the different kinds of deception this is talking about the great dragon revelation 12 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived how many the whole world so satan part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception he deceived the whole world the bible says he was cast into where he was cast into where uh oh earth there's a problem the deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven unfortunately he landed here what do you think will happen here on earth deception so he comes to eve 
and manipulates Eve comes to Adam and says Adam come let me tell you something did God really say that a b c d and Adam said well he said we may freely eat of the fruit Eve said this and that and that and then he said no there is something God is hiding from you God is hiding this I hope you know that Satan never um, Satan never wanted I used to think Satan wanted to replace God no no Satan didn't want to replace God he wanted to run a parallel government I will be like not I will be the most high the God continue your throne sit there I will also say, I want to sit by your right hand now you understand what happened to man Satan wanted to sit let's let's go since since the word Eloha Elohim it is plural add me to the Godhead that's what he wanted I am I have done too much I hope you know I, I like oh dear I don't want to go into the pre adamite dispensation but I hope you know when you begin to read Jeremiah chapter 4 I, I don't want to go there don't, don't don't go there media um for time's sake you you realize that Satan was sent as a representative of the love of God to the then civilization and the then creation what Jesus represents to our civilization was what Lucifer the light bearer the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he was sent he didn't just deceive a third of the angels are you seeing how powerful his deception is a third of the angels that are in heaven where God is they fell for him talk more of you and then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes and the kings and the nations lamented they say you have become like one of us jeremiah chapter 4 when you read you who brought the nations the bible says he weakened the nation that was his sin it was not just pride there was something he made that made the nations weak and now he has become like one of us and he raised up a lamentation then you begin to compare with other scriptures that's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan. The first occupant I told you of the garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. That was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there. Satan said, okay, God finish and go. And let me come to the garden I'm used to. He knew where to found to find Eve. He never said, Eve, where are you? It's God that said, Adam, where are you? Satan always knows where to find them. I know where frail human beings can be found. Let me tell you, every man, even from Adam, was born with the tendency to sin. In iniquity, Jeremiah said, Did my mother? He never said in sin remember it's iniquity that produces sin iniquity is a state of the heart the propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing that's why he said um, subdue replenish he used the word subdue in other words be careful there is a stranger i don't want to tell you his story but don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden and then satan came you think he came to eve one day no he had been coming Ah, Eve, so you are here today. He said, don't disturb me. God is coming in the cool of the day. He said, okay, let's talk Eve. Satan's deception is so powerful. Remain small. He would have gotten Jesus. Read your Bible. <laughs> Satan for you. When Satan took Jesus up the mountain, he tempted it on, him on three things that, re, that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth. The first dimension was your personal need. That's where the temptation started from jesus you are hungry remember part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need so satan i mean jesus don't watch stones like this where you are dying of hunger the power of god is able to turn stones into bread do it and jesus said no and satan found out okay i see you are so obsessed with your assignment you have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom next temptation let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of god why routed the hard way all the kings that are in these systems i deceived them and placed them there they are my boys bow to me and let me just give you their hearts instead of routing through the cross and all this pain 
Are you seeing Satan now? He left Jesus for a season. He said, I'm coming. Notice he never came directly to Jesus again. Satan for you. The next time we see Satan coming, he's coming to Peter. Remember, the goal is to Jesus. Then the next time we see him again, Judas. Then the next time in Jesus' weakness, he now comes and manipulates his mind. And Jesus for the first time says, Father, is it possible that you take this cup off me? And Jesus said, no. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, not my way. If Jesus prayed that prayer, the Father would have granted him. Yes. Because he always hears me. Jesus said it at the grave of Lazarus. I thank thee, Father, because you always hear me. I, ha I had to pray this in open so that they will know. I'm not my, my open prayer is not an act of unbelief. I'm saying it to minister to them. I thank thee because you always hear me. If Jesus stopped at that prayer, the Father would have said, well, I cannot be a demon to usurp your will. You have chosen to abort redemption. So let it be. And that would be it. He still will be the word. But there is no longer fruits of redemption. He will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten. But thank God he endured. And he has now become not just the only begotten. But the first begotten of the father. We being the proceeds of that salvation. And the Bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue. Are we together? Deception. The third way deception can happen. Ephesians 5 verse 6. God, we have to run. We have to run. At least let's, let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray. Let no man deceive you with what? Help me. So the third instrument of deception is vain words. You can use words that may look very spiritual expressions theologies spiritual communications that because they are deep and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate i can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries and in the end of it you are bamboozed by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of god on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the world are we together now that the word of god is able to establish you the Bible declares that I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So the word of God is able to give us wisdom. Wisdom. Number two, the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control. Manipulation and control. The first realm, the realm of deception, thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive that keep men subject to the laws of satan like we shared in luke 22 give us luke 22 and verse 31 this was the encounter that jesus had with peter remember luke 22 the lord said to simon watch this simon remember was a disciple of jesus although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know but the fact that they were 
in close touch with the word of God alone should create some system of immunity yet Satan penetrated all of that and came again through Simon the chiefest of the apostles are we together he was forbidding Jesus that Jesus should not talk about death no Jesus don't talk about the cross and everything and Jesus was say oh Simon you love me so much you are such a kind man Jesus looked at him and said no this is not kindness this is this is the devil wants to use he's taking advantage now watch this are you seeing how manipulation and control happens it takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly and Satan can buy into it to become what you if you have compassion Satan can use compassion to deceive you if you have intelligence Satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you here he takes advantage of Peter's compassion Peter thought he was being sympathetic to Jesus Jesus you've done too much don't talk about death I'm going to miss you what does a good leader do oh I, I, you guys are all wicked people I'm talking of dying and none of you is crying Peter come I love you in fact when I when, when as I'm going to heaven you will receive my mantle for being this compassionate hear what Jesus says Jesus looks at Peter with the tears running from his eyes and says get thee behind me this is Jesus why didn't he look at the ground get no 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 he looks at Peter get thee behind me Simon Simon he said Satan had desired to do what have you that he may sift you as wheat next verse but i have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted he say use this same formula to strengthen your brethren that means intercede for them too because satan will come are you seeing why intercession is important in a church for the saints paul was praying that we we pray that that um, um prayers and supplications be offered for those in government for this and that that we may live a peaceable and a quiet life if you don't pray satan will sway people manipulation the realm of the mind now this is where it looks as though believers are possessed are we together because you see when you are i, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now that that's for series three are we together but you notice even here in koinonia and even you know right now as i've been talking you are seeing believers that you know love god but in the pro they themselves are shocked all of a sudden they start crying and talking things and saying things and you look at them and you say ah, but this person is a believer why is this person suddenly crying out and your spirit is leaving the person the physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same it takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there so be careful so you don't blackmail believers and all of a sudden you see a mecca now standing and i touch his head and he's manifesting i say see, see this guy these, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in koinonia no no that kind of talk is is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes don't blackmail believers just because of this and again we prophets and apostles i think we must be warned in jesus name because we are the ones who advocate this confusion just because you look and see a snake you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry he knows he's not a snake he knows he's not a fool he loves god with all his heart he's surprised that he was manifesting and he's ashamed and he he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall so that means they are sound not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head are we together god bless you so the realm of the mind manipulation and control this is where satan sways our thoughts ah. 
it is manipulation and control is so powerful it will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers not unbelievers unbelievers are so flexible the sincerity of their heart doesn't even it allows them to find truth it is believers that are quick to look at men of God Apostle Joshua Selman how can a young man like that have crowd like be careful Lord we are in the end times and you will think you are being sincere are we together now manipulation it is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much he now uses his face to you in a dream watch this somebody that loves you and is praying for you maybe your mother now appears and you go and say apostle prophet I saw my mother with a knife and he said I've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch and all of a sudden you carry axe and straight to your village and your mother said oh my dad so don't tell me anything so you are the one behind my pain manipulation both the counselor and the counselee both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control are we together now very important satan can manipulate you the moment he sees that you are get you are praying over a challenge in your life and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the lord he withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying you will take you will take the withdrawal to be victory established then you will now say because he knows that you never seek god until there is trouble so the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the lord you will see a temporary victory and you say ah that's it the dream has stopped and so you continue in that low level and think you are safe whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter is god giving us intelligence tonight manipulation do you know brothers and sisters i look at my own life let me be honest with you I look at my own life I look at my background and brothers and sisters I'm shocked at how well-meaning my life was and how Satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines with theories with all kinds of things it's amazing sometimes I sit down and I listen to men of God sometimes I attend conferences and I see people and I see very well-meaning believers but I am afraid sometimes even very anointed I am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations the very context of their doctrine will tell you that they are under manipulation There are all kinds of manipulations if i get up today for instance as a man of god and i believe that every other church and every other ministry in zaria is wasting god's time except me that state is already a sign of progress in an attack are you getting what i'm saying if i believe that I'm the most anointed man of God in Zaria and that every other person especially our fathers our reverends here and there they are just talkatives wasting God's time the fact that I could accept that imagination why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that I could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that I'm a victim of manipulation and control are you getting what I'm saying now dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack dishonor to constituted authority we are all men of God there's nothing you have that I don't have is a sign of this level of attack listen very carefully the pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this you will not know Oh, I come and I say, look, I've, I've fasted for 40 days. Mr. Man, how long do you fast? He said, well, I managed to do two. Like, <laughs> love is like, this guy. Yeah, still, I pray that God will bring you up. Oh, I'm going to go and pray. And you think that just because you did that is a show of spirituality. It could be that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you. But it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind. 
then on the other hand you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say look all you guys need you see you see wisdom is profitable to direct this prayer prayer is, is all nonsense you are just praying stupid that state too is another version of manipulation are you getting the point now yes the fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of god working for you is big deception i'm repeating this thing again i believe in prosperity we've taught a lot on success systems but learn this i think the church of the lord jesus christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life in terms of financial abundance no remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery babylon can enrich the kings of the earth she's a merchant she can make men rich so just because i'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread you can mistaken the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because i have tea and bread my life is all right it's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege and i myself can be deceived because the moment i want to think about my life and a lot comes one million that means this thing is in place if it was not in place i mean where did the devil stop it from the bank let's be very careful a man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has i'm not against abundance now i hate poverty we all do as a ministry are we together but at the same time we must be careful there are many people whose lives are not all right just because they have a lot of money they just turn and look at other poor it's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed even if he's free he will not agree because the whiplash of the uh what call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right even when he has been delivered there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful when someone does not eat it's easy that's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses it's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage are we together manipulation and control number three find somewhere to stop here tonight is complete possession that means complete possession of your spirit your soul your body the entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness this is called possession the Bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing mark chapter 5 the madman in Gadara do you know why he was a madman in fact he was not even a madman we only called him mad simply because of the context of our civilization the goal of the demons was not to make him mad they were just too many in one person and so his activity looked like that of somebody who is insane the goal was not insanity how could you have a legion of demons and be all right based on men's context of civilization imagine the war this one is saying cut this stone and so he just remained and notice how restful he was the bible says he will sit down in a cave quietly they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings it's a long reading we'll find somewhere to stop verse 2 let's continue and when he was come out of the ship listen carefully immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what you see that was not a madman it was just a man with too many unclean spirits a man with an unclean spirit verse 3 who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains a man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him verse 5 okay and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones 6 
But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Now, you would think that worship is homage. No. This is Satan at work. Deception. This, uh, let me tell you this. When Satan knows you will overpower him, his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you. Remember in the book of Acts, these are the holy men of God. They have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom so that the day Paul goes will say, since we can't see Paul, we know that you are allies in ministry and the deception will continue. Be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you. It's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there so that you will be struck eventually. But when he saw Jesus, he ran and worshipped him. Verse 6. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God. Satan. Speaking through a man. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Eight. Oh dear. I'm sorry, Mark is not giving us the context I'm looking for. Anyway, we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there. One of the synoptics that talks about the legions, I thought that was where it would lead us. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Mark gave us an epistle of one spirit, but we know, I think, um, ah, okay, Mark leaves it there too. And he asks him, What is thy name? Identify yourself. Now, there has been a debate about this i don't i will talk about it next week talking to demons talking back to you will address it don't worry trust me my name is joshua selman justice will be done adequately are we together now and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is is that a name my name is what legion suddenly he now changes from i to we we are many don't be deceived that only one person is speaking. We are many. Multiple spirits can exist within the same entity. Strange. So your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you. Another spirit, many spirits, legions. We are many. Verse 10. And he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country. This is another discussion. How can demons beg and say, okay, apostle, cast us out of here, but let's not go outside of new extension. We have been in new extension for a long time. Look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have. They know that there is jurisdiction of their influence. And saying, if you take us out of that jurisdiction, there is no basis for dominion. So leave us within our prescribed territory. We will leave the individual you are interested in, but leave the territory. This is a message that many of us need to learn. So it can leave you, but it's still around you. Waiting for a moment when you will grant access again. Jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man, so demons can leave men. Let it not surprise you that demons leave men. The Bible says he goes through arid regions and not finding any place of habitation. It will tell itself, I will return back to my house. You are born again. He's still calling you his house. You see how tenacious Satan is? My house. And he comes and finds it swept, clean, but empty. Then it doesn't enter alone. It gathers seven greater than itself. Look at that system of coordination. Seven greater than itself. And returns and they comfortably stay in you. So that the end of that man is even worse. Don't miss the next part three of this. I will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete. And I'll be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever you know because this is I, i'm already going ahead of myself i want to solve that problem there are many well-meaning believers who teach that deliverance is an ongoing continuous and forever process in a way they are right and in a way they are wrong when i teach you the dimensions of deliverance we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong 
the deliverance of transformation because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation it is an ongoing process christ being the standard on and the reference so in that way it is correct but deliverance like a continual exorcism casting away of spirit beings the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away are you getting me now all of that we're going to deal with next week we have to find a place to tie it today levels of satanic influence number one deception we're just doing a recap number two manipulation and control number three complete possession look up please of all these three levels the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to Christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept you have to understand an old Jewish practice called salt covenant uh, the salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries and they would use salt are we together you would bring your salt i will bring my salt and we'll pour it together in a vessel and mix it the condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out are we together so our redemption is in the similitude of that kind complete possession by the authority of scripture i do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit soul and body although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation are you getting where the error comes from now so like i said if i pray we're going to start praying shortly and many of you even as you are listening to me now will find out that you start manifesting and sometimes in the manifestation you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed are we together and if you do not discern with understanding you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed i've seen many people join the line after koinonia and then they ask me apostle am i a witch i said what is the meaning of that he said please i'm tired of everybody around saying i'm a witch even a witch listen carefully even a witch is not entirely possessed hmm. you see that that thing we call witch and wizards no There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman or so, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans. The salvation is not for them they cannot access the redemptive work of Jesus otherwise probably the angels would have re repented salvation is not for angels salvation is not for any other beings in fact in fact listen very carefully the scope of salvation starts as as far as the authority of Scripture reveals to us starts from the Adam the man who originated our human civilization if you were before adam there was another system are we together it was not redemption through the blood of the eternal son of god because when according to apostle peter when jesus went to hell the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-adamites we know that by those who resurrected with him are we together now the bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of jerusalem then having ascended to the father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there the atonement he now came and they all went together are we together now so we know that it is true that that uh, apostle peter lets us know that jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers but if you were not of adam that's why jesus is called the second adam 
so it starts from there there are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation but they are on earth satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them are you getting what i'm saying now so you can find some of these entities the fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials but material bodies and then you will also see them manifest in material bodies i'm not talking of entering a human being they themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material but it's not a human being those are the kinds that we that's the classic proof of wizardry are we together now it's not just an individual who has been possessed there is a dimension of that but there are beings on earth that you see they are humanoid in their context but they are not human beings they are not progenitors from from adam salvation they can't receive salvation it is this kind that the bible says spare not a witch to live You will be blessed with a lot of balance um if there's something I, I want to reserve it till part three because as i just said that thing, many of you now are afraid okay so if they don't leave you are trying to say they die so what does that mean because many of you have seen ministries uh, respectfully great ministries like mountain of fire and all of that sometimes you see them say die and then you're now saying so what is it and men of god have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die we will find out how spirits die because spirits die <laughs> hmm. ah, jesus the greatest strength of satan the one factor that makes satan look powerful over lives is one word the flesh write it down the flesh next or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it we'll start from there the flesh i have to stop now no matter what level of deliverance you go through every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh are we together now this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in in futility comes from an attempt to continue to cast out spirits cast out spirits cast out spirits and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say eh, to mean you are powerful and is waiting he knows so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that god has brought to you are we blessed rise up on your feet rise up please you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign
as we enthrone his majesty over all the works of darkness. One minute we are going to pray just two prayer points i like you to lift up your voice and declare that in the name of jesus i'm walking in the experience of the victory the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the death of jesus the victory of his triumphant resurrection lift your voice and declare Never will it become a prophetic reality. It is becoming my experience. Victory over generational curses. Victory over yokes and bondages. Lord, I declare, Lord, I declare, complete victory over the works of darkness. Hallelujah. 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 I know that I've not, I've not taught it the next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements. But one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood. Are we together? It's one of the three witnesses. The Bible says, and there are three witnesses that bear, three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It says that there are three witnesses. This is where the problem is, the earth. It says the spirit, the water, and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel the man had died but Abel the blood was speaking and he cried and God himself had to say no something is happening although the man had died but the blood is still speaking I'd like you to engage the blood and say in the name of Jesus I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood I invoke the advocacy of the blood open your mouth and speak open your mouth and speak over every pattern, over every curse, over every yoke. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon your life, upon your family, when I see the blood upon every ordinance against you, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon the pronouncements in your family, I will pass over. Lift your voice and invoke the blood. We declare that the blood speaks. Declare the mystery of God's mercy. The blood speaks. We declare the priesthood of Jesus that is after the order of Melchizedek, higher than the Aaronic priesthood, higher than the priesthood of Noah. We declare in the name of Jesus. The blood speaks. 
the blood speaks over the ordinance of our fathers the blood speaks hallelujah hallelujah help that lady please the bible says listen carefully just help those under the anointing something is happening here the bible says we have been called out of every tribe out of every tongue remember i'll be sharing with you every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun the sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth that's why the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you the sun does not smite in itself but i can take advantage of the sun every activity demonically on earth without the when there was darkness upon the earth there was no demonic activity until light returned then satan now returned with his activity too when there was all through the period of darkness the only entity we see is the spirit of god we never hear of any demon jumping the moment the sun was withdrawn and the moon was withdrawn so the psalmist said the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night which can thrive only with the sun that's why jesus himself is called the son of righteousness that can arise with healings thou shall not be he said the sun shall not smite you that means for as long as there is sun and there is moon i can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you that will tap the power of the sun to spare you away watch this hold on joseph goes to bed and has a dream and here's his dream i saw the sun i saw the moon and i saw 11 stars remember all of them are lights they are just different kinds of light bowing to me when jacob had this jacob said so me jacob called himself the son so i will bow and my wife who gets her glory from me like the moon from the sun and then your brothers who are also stars will bow to you jacob was worried the sun bowing the sun can bow the moon can bow even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow what is this power that can make the sun bow by next week i'll share with you how god delivered me you know i've been telling you what i went through but i've not shared with you how i came out this is what i want to share with you kai look let me tell you you don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit you will smash the gates of darkness he said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder that you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to satan and say i dare you i will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him i'm happy his name is called joshua Hi. <laughs> watch this watch this every time god wanted to bring redemption to men he didn't just bless them he did something to the sun and the moon to realign them to their advantage hezekiah was about to die and when god turned his life he said as a sign i will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it kill you will no longer be able to touch you joshua looked at the sun and said jericho is not an ordinary city they are fortified because they have done something even with the sun and the moon and he said son there is war about to be fought and because of that stand still it's not just because of light son 
stand still moon hold your peace and all of a sudden Jericho suddenly became afraid the diviners in Jericho said this thing is not working again they said what happened they said someone has done something to the sun Jericho was close and they were afraid the, na the nation of Israel were not fighting Therefore, the, the Bible said they were closed. None went out, none entered. They said we're in trouble. The sun and the moon. You will see why herbalists do all kinds of things and drop a mirror on the ground and use a sun and or the sun and make stupid enchantments and we laugh and say, Oh, it doesn't matter. And all of a sudden, you will now see why the psalmist categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night there are arrows that fly only by day the what empowers them is the sun there is the destruction that wasted in noonday once it is 12 on the dot that destruction can start please be interested in what i'm sharing because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of these mysteries. There is what can subdue causes. Yes, it is the blood of Jesus. Yes, it is all of this. But the dynamics of that operation, brothers and sisters, the powers that hold Africa are powerful. Don't trivialize it. Jesus is above all. I don't in any way demean the power of God. If I did, I would not be standing here. If I did, this koinonia will not be standing here. If I'm faking what I tell you, I will not open my mouth to declare this. Because that means I won't be able to sleep this night too. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. We are still on that exercise of night prayers. I know some of you have not been doing it. Don't do it as a ritual. But I want you to receive grace. To do it with understanding. Forget about what happens. Just do what I ask you to do. It doesn't matter whether, even if you are praying and a demon appears. Don't worry. You are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of God. Conquer the realm of the flesh. Are we together? We are going to receive grace to pray but i want to pray for you right now madam can i talk to you please come your time of visitation has come because while you were there the lord was ministering to me and i heard what you were saying you were telling the lord that you know he will visit you this night yes come please let me talk to you god is going to set your he's going to change your entire life Amen. 180 degrees Amen. Jesus Christ who we'll pray God is addressing your health number Amen. one what's wrong with you um, 2011 I was diagnosed of hypertension hypertension then 2006 I had a cesarean section my last baby uh-huh I lost the baby since then my abdomen refused to go back to its normal size because this is demonic yes. it's not it's it not used to it, trouble me that's what I'm saying so when I came here it was one of the prayer points I said God should locate me in my health my abdomen my finances, my marriage. God is and my God children. is going to Madam, let nobody let you think that it's too late to have a child. Amen. This is what the Lord is saying I should Amen. minister to you. Amen. Forget about what has happened. Amen. We are going to pray. Because until this thing goes down, a child is not coming. There is a spirit that is responsible. I curse that spirit now. Go! Go! 
I see you in the spirit. Let this woman go right now. Go. You see, you see it leaving her. You are a wicked devil of darkness. Go. 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 I prophesy and I command victory in the name of Jesus. Hypertension, you are a spirit. Live now. Live now. I command this thing to go down. To go down. Every growth, every swelling. I command it to leave in the name of Jesus and your high blood pressure that is high I command it to go down also and this man that comes to molest you in dreams the last time you saw him is the last time you will ever see him in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to speak over your finances I command that by the mystery of divine supply let there be a turnaround miracle in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a woman outside. One mama just like this outside. Outside. Please, let's save time. Because we want to pray for the sick. I want to see how we'll finish as soon as possible. Please don't stop praying. Keep praying. God is touching people. Please come no she's not the one I'm seeing but just come but she's not the one there is another one hallelujah stretch your hands and pray against the spirit of death upon this man because I'm seeing the spirit of death. I'm seeing the spirit of death. We challenge this spirit, oh God. We challenge this spirit, oh God. Go! You will not die. I cast the spirit of death. I cast the spirit of death. I minister life to you. Life. Life life i'm praying for you i command breakthrough into your life madam in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your life i command you to come alive right now in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah the lord is showing me another woman i'm seeing you are from benway state Benway State. I'm seeing a woman from Benway. 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 Please, if there's someone like that, let's just. Hallelujah. Benway State. There's someone here. You came to stand for someone with breast cancer. Cancer is cancer of the breast. Who is that? You came to stand in for someone. You're the one. You are the one? Yes, sir. My cousin. Your cousin. Yes. Breast cancer. Yes, sir. Because this thing has gone serious. Yes, sir. And it's only the power of God. Yes, Otherwise, sir. they are going to cut off the breast. Yes, sir. That's what the doctors have said. Yes, but sir. tonight, there is a name that is above every other name. Jesus. There is a name. There is a name. There is a name. Hold my hands. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We curse that spirit right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing you wearing an atlas shoes. God is bringing advancement and speed into your life. I'm seeing you wearing the shoes of an athlete Because you are going to run. God is going to visit you in a very mighty way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Breast cancer. Father let there be perfection in the name of Jesus Christ let her come let her come I know it's not even I want to talk about it. your mother 
Where is your mother? My mother. She's at home. She's at home. God is going to visit your mother in a very mighty way. Amen. God is, I'm seeing increase coming. It looks like a promotion or something is coming for your mom. And I'm seeing God visiting your family's finance in a very mighty way. I'm seeing a ring in your hand. Are you married? You are married. Yes. Where's your husband? He's, He's seated there. Please come, husband. I, I'm not sure I know you. Come, because God wants to speak a word to the family. Sir, the Lord God of Israel is going to visit your family in the next three months. Amen. You will see dramatic things. Amen. There are things that I may not say in, in the open now, but I see a miracle coming. I see a miracle coming. Um, how long have you been married, sir? I'm hearing a cry of a baby. And it's a baby girl. It's a baby girl. It's a baby girl. This will happen by the Spirit of God. This will happen by the grace of God. Please lay your hands on your stomach. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I curse everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing you buying a new car. I'm seeing you buying a new car. God is showing me. You are buying a new car. It's a Toyota car. It's a Toyota car. You will see God do it by the hand of God. And God is also bringing you. Um, I'm seeing God bringing men to help you, even financially. Because this is one of the things that you really desire. Amen. God is bringing men to help you financially. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, let Amen. this be so. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, before I pray for the sick, did I pray for her? From Benway State. Mama, come. Do you have a daughter, ma? Yes. This is the daughter. I need to pray for you. Just leave your mother and hold my hands. We need to pray for you. So that you will not have a child before marriage. Huh? We need to pray for you. There is a spirit in the family. And we have to pray. Because even you as you are like this. It's not like you don't love God. But you need to settle down. Otherwise men. Men cause a lot of problems. And it's not like you're a bad girl. It's a spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set her free from every yoke of darkness. Let her go now. Go! Mama, may God bless you. I open a new chapter for your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus that everything that has caused you pain, my God is visiting you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we sing that song, there's power in the name of Jesus. All the people that came here for healing, please just come and arrange yourself. Everybody keep praying in tongues and say, Father, visit me. God is visiting people inside and outside. Please be orderly. Let's do it very fast. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power. If you came with anybody's picture, you can also hold it. There is power. It's called a miracle service. It's not just a name, it's an experience to break every chain of darkness. No matter if there's no space, just that as we pray for others, then they will give way. One more time. There is power.
listen. He that cometh unto God must believe. There is more than enough power to address any situation. I don't care what it is and I don't care how long it has been. Hallelujah. I'm going to lay my hands upon you and pray. Listen. Some of you are coming in for sickness. But what is the, the root cause of all of this? Is, is, the, is the same root cause that is affecting finance, affecting marriage. God is not just going to heal you. Hallelujah. God is going to address the root cause. Hallelujah. So as I pray for you, I want you to march down to your seat. Whatever you could not do, make sure you begin to do it. Hallelujah. I already sense the fire of the Holy Ghost upon my hands. Very strong. And all of us who are standing, God is touching people inside and outside. Be focused. Don't be distracted. By the way, if you have not written your prayer request, now is the opportunity to take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Let there be such a move of the healing power of Jesus that as these hands are laid, stretch forth your right hand, O oh God, and let your people be healed in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Look at this woman crying. Hold on. Hold on, please. Who brought this woman? I brought myself. Jesus brought me here. But the, the evil spirit has been attacking me. Something has been moving over my body. It's okay. Please don't cry. Uh, about 30 years now. Tonight is your night of liberty. I hear the chains falling. Jesus. I cast this spirit out. Out. I command that devil of death. Leave this body now. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I hear the chain falling down. In your, there was pain in your leg, but now is there? Pain? It has. Do check yourself. It has. And it's like your stomach used to feel strong, and and then you feel something moving like a snake. Check it now. Check it now. Squeeze yourself. Father, Jesus, Father, thank you. There's nothing. I'm not feeling anything. Everything has gone. This was a spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are here. Come on, celebrate Jesus, people.
listen. Hold on. It doesn't matter what the problem is. Do you understand? If I ask you, it's because God told me to ask you. Whatever it is, just believe that as I'm praying for you, it's going. Are you getting my point? So move forward. Some of you, if, if we keep asking one by one, it doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. Go ahead, watch it. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord. Five years of ulcer, you'll be healed, right? And, and discharging. Hey, don't worry. God will set you free. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. I'm a 
miracles everywhere. And miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. And right now, right now, miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere, everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Jesus Christ. Please make sure you are praying. Don't think God is just touching the people here. There is something the atmosphere is doing. Let's just finish the prayer for this.
this a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. God is a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. lion in the spirit this guy has a wild spirit when he's angry he can kill and it's not his fault this is this is an ancestral thing see how many people trying to hold one person this is how it will tie his destiny this is how he will get married to a very innocent lady and be manifesting things that he doesn't know i set you free right now this is a place of liberty leave him leave him he's free Oh, yeah. 
Certain families free right now from marital delay. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. All those affected, as you count three, the fire of God will sweep across this place. There are marital destinies that have been tied down. Some of you, you are standing, but you are representing your family in the name that is above all names. Right now, anyone tied under any manifestation spirit husband spirit wife every manifestation of darkness as you shout the name jesus right now i command those doors to be open one two three free i set you free now right now right now right now be free I open up doors of marriages inside and outside. Be free. Be free. Every spell, every curse stopping your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Mommy, please can I talk to you? Your time of visitation has come because the Lord is saying He is going to wipe your tears and He's going to do this speedily. It's by the hand of the Lord. It's where is your husband, man? Do you know why I'm asking you this? Because your situation is like in a similitude of that of Sarah, but God is going to wipe your tears. Please believe me. When I pray for you, I'm praying for marital delays. And then I'm looking at you. And the Lord is saying that this woman does not even have a husband. At the point I even say, ah, what is this? Is that true? And I'm asking myself, but I'll pray for you. You, you trust God to settle down? I'll pray for you. Yes, it will happen. It will happen. Anyone here due for marriage, listen. Listen. 
anyone here be it yourself or any member of your family that is long overdue for marriage right now i prophesy in the name that is above all names let those doors be open now may those doors be open now something is happening in this place may those doors be open now may those doors be open now madam you will stand before the people of god when your wedding card is out if there is a god in heaven i break that curse right now now and i release your marital destiny in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah is the lord god almighty is the lord god almighty the earth is full of his glory my life is full of your glory and the people say holy Oh, oh, oh. And the people say oh, oh, Hallelujah All of you lift your hands God is going to do something amazing here right now Listen Everyone is standing for himself now Not for family Please lift your hands Listen I'm seeing powers that have tied down the advancement of people. Listen to me. Because the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing someone standing with a sword. And this is a sword of judgment. This one is not for families again. There are many of us, you are walking, but you are standing because nothing is moving. Right now, in the name of Jesus, many of you will literally feel the fire of God come upon you like a baptism is burning chaffs burning chains some of you your academics are the way they are right now because of powers Neke Paratika come on now. Father in the name of Jesus right now chains be broken be broken be broken chains be broken baptisms are happening baptisms of fire personal deliverances of fire 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 the fire of the holy ghost it's time for you to move forward fresh fire to move forward fresh fire no stagnation fresh fire Fresh fire! Fresh fire! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. We are still going to do this again. Listen, I'm telling you, this is the root problem of many of the our predicaments. There are there are forces. Please follow me. This is the part you get to participate. Lift your hands again. Lord, what is it that has tied your people down? They have prayed for others. They have ministered to others. But right now, like a volcano, let the fire of God sweep across this place. Right now. Let it burn the roots. Let it burn the roots. Set the roots on fire. Set the roots on fire. Let your people make progress. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let's enter the realm of your academics now. There are horns. 
tired people's CGPA, tired people's minds. But he said, I have sent carpenters. Lift your hands. It's not everyone that is dull. There are people who are studying. You are doing your best. Right now, all of those ones, your hands, fire is coming on your hands. Just your hands. There will be a mighty deliverance. Right now, one, two, three. Fire on your hands. On your hands. Fire. Academic liberty. Fire on your hands. We break those chains. We break those chains. We break those chains. Come on, join me as you pray. Join me as you pray. Academic chains be broken. Hallelujah. There are some of us, listen, God is setting people free tonight. One cycle of tragedy. As soon as he's finishing, another one is starting. It, it never comes to a point where your family can experience peace. The Bible says, and he dug a well, and they came and closed it. He dug another one, and they closed it. And he dug the third one, and they left it, and they said, Rehoboth, the Lord has given me room. I'm praying right now. Please pay attention to what I'm doing. This is the root cause. Believe me. You will be wasting your time for nothing if you don't confront these powers you can receive temporary breakthrough but you will get back into the same situation hallelujah in fact we are going to pray just for one minute hallelujah you are going to pray i like you to pray like a priest in the next one to two minutes listen I like you to tell the Lord that whatever is the root cause, you are not concerned about the fruits and the leaves. It may be headache, leave that one. Lord, what is the root cause of my stagnation? What is the root cause of my family's problem? In the name of Jesus, let it be confronted tonight. Lift your voice and pray. I pray, take it, take it, take it. Ropoko poto pata. We attack the root causes of sicknesses. The root causes. Pray. Pray for your business. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your academics. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. But there are many of us here. The troubles in our lives are as a result of the mistakes and the wickedness for some of us of our parents and loved ones. He said, who's seen that this man is in this situation? Is it him or his father? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please lift your hands. God is setting men free tonight. Anyone here going through circles of tragedy as a result of covenant and parental influence, as you shout the name Jesus after the count of three, 
May the fire of God separate you from the mistakes of your lineage. In the name of Jesus. One. Two. Three. Be separated. Be separated. Be separated. Now. Be separated. I break limitations. Ancestral spirits. Tribal spirits. Territorial spirits. Right now. Be free. Every name that is in any demonic cover. We set it on fire now. We set it on fire now. Jesus died to set us free. Jesus truly died to set us free. It wasn't a joke. He said, but we do not see all things under his feet. Lift your hands again. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I am ready to make progress. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to break barriers. And tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I confront and challenge the root causes of my limitation. Lift your voice and begin to pray. We challenge it. We challenge powers that have limited men. There must be a release tonight. Jacob wrestled with God. Pray. 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 It's time for you to move forward. It's time for you to break limits. Break limits. I tell you, God is there are there are massive, there is an emancipation. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks for me in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus is the price for my freedom listen keep the hands lifted just keep them lifted all instruments just stop just lift your hands and keep them lifted there is a reason why I'm saying you should keep them lifted hallelujah the Spirit of God is going to walk through the crowd. Listen, just keep them lifted. Something marvelous will happen right now. I'm seeing water that God is pouring on people. Right now, let the power of God move everywhere, inside and outside. This water that I see an angel pouring is a cleansing, is a purging of many people's foundations. Just keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is going on, but just lift your hands. If you trust that God is in this place, let the angels move right now. Row to row, line to line. Visit men, oh God. Visit men. Visit men. Katelato. Row to row. Water. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the water, the blood. I invoke the power of these three spiritual entities right now. The mystery of the spirit, the water, and the blood. I tell you, see, many of you will, will walk into levels of breakthrough that will surprise you. Keep it lifted. Just keep it lifted. 
Keep it lifted. You don't know what is happening in the spirit. Just keep it lifted. Jesus. Shikaparia. Neketa. Mandeporiata. I see covens on fire. I'm telling you. Covens of darkness. On fire. This is not just your family. This is your life now. You prayed for your family. But you need to move forward. Otherwise men will think you are faking this thing. A chain is falling from someone's head. A chain is falling from someone's head. A chain is falling from someone's head. I see this in the spirit. A chain is falling. This is mental bondage. A chain is falling. I'm hearing sounds of chains. Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we submit the prayer request, lift your hands. You are going to mention one thing, just one, that you want God to do, that everyone will know that this one, I prayed it here and God did it. Are you getting my point now? I'm just walking based on the instructions of the Spirit. He wants to give you a sign of His presence in your life. I know you wrote many things. Brothers and sisters, in the next one minute, cry out one thing one just one don't be foolish pray pray i'm ministering by the influence of the spirit pray no matter how impossible it is pray so topa unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come Unto you that answers prayer. Suppose the case panda reketa kapa mataleketa. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it. There is nothing out for my God. Pray it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, let's pray in tongues for one minute as we collect the prayer request. Please go ahead. God is just leading us to pray and he's doing many things in the background. Please quickly, in one minute, let's submit the prayer request. Pass it to the last person. Pass it to the last person. Ushers, please cooperate with us and let's hurry up. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Keep passing the request, but listen to me. I made a vow to God. I just returned from my retreat. And one of the vows that I made to God is that I don't care what people would think about me. But if I ever have the opportunity to minister to God's people, I'd rather have an ugly message and let people get results. Are you getting what I'm saying? Part of my, my prayer, and I, I took out time to cry. I said, Lord, your people must see your hand it says oh lord you are my god early will i seek you my heart longs after you to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary that means what i have seen in the sanctuary i am also a sanctuary reproduce the result in my life hallelujah so this program is aimed at bringing everyone into a place of 
personal spiritual success and let me tell you I know that it's not a very nice message I wish that I didn't have to pray to confront spirits and powers that stop people I like to preach a nice message that will just tell you that don't worry if you believe everything is has, has gone it has gone I wish I just wish it were like that but brothers and sisters I can tell you it is not it is not you will believe that lie to your detriment it is not we live in a rude world and there are forces otherwise the anointing of the spirit is useless what then is the purpose of the anointing what then is the efficacy of the blood why then does Paul tell us to put on hallelujah I want your life to experience breakthroughs see otherwise we have no right to tell people we are not faking it are you getting my point if there is no breakthrough in your life then what then is the confidence of the message that people keep saying God is I'm one I believe that one result can silence a lot of questions I'm not that believer that likes just no there must be an evidence in your life. I don't know how many times I saw this. When I kept praying, the Lord kept talking to me and said, the root cause, deal with the root cause of people's lives. Root cause. I'm telling you, it's not just healing alone. That's why you notice I prayed for the sick very quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We are going to pray one prayer point before we have all the prayer requests here. Inside and outside. Make sure you are participating. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray and challenge every limitation, whether mental, whether spiritual anything that limits you is not of god lift up your voice and confront it i break limitations if there are no limitations you will make progress if there are no limitations you will make progress please everyone pray take this seriously even if you are walking be praying as you're walking Lord, I challenge limitations. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no boundaries. As far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. So potoko pata da 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 da. So preteke lepo do subandi le kabaria. So preteke lepo koto ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still going to pray. I'm going to be laying hands on these requests. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two. Find a man or a woman of prayer. We are challenging limitations. That word limitation. Media project it. That word limitation. Write it. That's the word we are attacking this night. Ye have tarried in this mountain for too long. He said, turn ye not words. Hallelujah. Hold on before you pray. While I lay my hands here. Hallelujah. Hold the hands of the person you are going to pray. If there is nobody, you can join and make two or three. Say in the name of Jesus. 
One more time, say in the name of Jesus. I come as an ambassador of the kingdom. And I challenge every limitation in every area of my life. I command it to bow down. The Bible says, Naaman, hear me, Second Kings 5. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a mighty man, but tonight we are going to confront the bots in our lives. You are academically excellent, but there are limitations. I don't know if there are limitations in someone's life that you are saying, Lord, in this miracle service, this is it. Hallelujah. While I pray in the next two to three minutes, instrumentalists play, clash the cymbal, and everyone pray. Hold the hands of your neighbor. If he's joking, leave him and hold another person.
I believe with all my heart that God is confronting limitations. Many of you don't know what limitations are. You, poverty is a limitation. Are you getting my point? Spiritual bankruptcy is a limitation. A prayerless life is a capital limitation. A wordless life is a limitation. When you are supposed to get married and you've not gotten married, it's a limitation. Academic backwardness. See, there are very few people who are here for, for sicknesses and all. It's, it's limitation. That's the name of what you are going through. Hallelujah. Before I prophesy, we'll soon have the last session and then we're, we're done. We're still going to pray. Don't be tired. I beg you, just follow through with me. If you believe that I hear God and if you believe we are walking by the Spirit, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. Limitation. I know a brother, listen, listen. I know a brother that for many years, this gentleman was so gifted, but I'm telling you, nothing was working in his life. Please hear me. This is a true story. Very gifted, but things were tied down. Hallelujah. He did everything, did everything that, that he knew to do. But when God made him know that these things are limitations, he took a quality time of his life challenging it. And brothers and sisters, when he prevailed, doors were open. It was as if the blessings have left heaven but to now come to this realm. And Daniel remained in prayer. Please hear me. Anything that kills your prayer life has stopped you from your breakthrough. It's not the issue of I'm called into the ministry of prayer or not. Forget that nonsense that the devil brings. Men ought always. Luke 18.1 He spake this parable if you are alive, you don't pray because of fear. You pray because it's a spiritual transaction. It makes things possible in this realm. Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. And you are going to say, Lord, one more time. Visit this issue of limitation in my life and my family. Hallelujah. Listen, listen mention the aspects where you are facing limitation don't feel embarrassed mention them and say lord let your fire come upon it lift your voice and pray koinonia pray pray your way to breakthrough sopata teka repoto pakata sente teke pretekete we lift up an incense of prayer 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 change lives break limits financial limits support intellectual limits Marital limits, job limits, we break it. Sopotopata, we break limitations, business limitations, ministry limitations, limitations of potentials. Hallelujah. The last prayer point hallelujah the last prayer point every time limits are broken the lord will bring a man to hold your hands and create the opportunity for the next level of your life are you hearing what i'm saying bishop oyedeko will say there are days and there are certain days may this night be the certain day listen Scriptures Your next level about a blessed is in the hands that of a certain man.
whose the Bible says is in the they Lord wanted God. to kill Joseph, so someone, but see, a certain man says, came but is the and they Lord said they wanted to buy him. Lord if God. not because of and that certain God, man, they would have killed him. Do Are you following me now? The it's Bible talks about a man like who a was crippled. He could not carry himself. Certain men, no names, they lifted him and opened the sea. Oh God, whoever is that certain man that must appear in my destiny, I come. I compel them to come. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice. Destiny help us. Financial help us. Spiritual help us. Men of influence. Men of access. So we would entreat you to support. Rokoto Bosch, Rekete men that will connect us to our next level, men that will connect us to our next dimension. Please pray, 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 pray. Lord, we call them for. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, hear me. The prophet prophesied that his body will not see corruption. But he was hanging on that cross. There was no place to bury him. And a certain man came called Joseph of Arimathea. An influential man. If he was poor and broke, the king would not hear him. The Bible says a poor man's wisdom is despised. You are going to pray concerning your finances. Does it make sense to you to pray? You are going to pray and say, Lord, whoever must appear to change my financial destiny I receive their ministry come on now pray come on now pray support time and chance happens to them all time and chance be it a Cyrus or a son of the kingdom We embrace their ministry. We embrace their ministry. So put up photos. I call them forth. Come on, pray. I call them forth. Men of influence. Kings. Destiny help us, spiritual help us, financial help us, academic help us, men of influence, men who can talk to kings, pray. Hallelujah. Please leave your neighbor. Joseph would have died in the prison although anointed there are many people here your anointing will remain dormant until God sends a man to see it announce it and let the world celebrate it John the Baptist announced Jesus' ministry are you hearing what I'm saying there are many of us we have great ideas great businesses but there needs to be a certain man who will let the world know that great things are happening here please hear what i'm saying there are many of you your your academic qualification is bigger than where you are you have done your best when you have done all you need to do you need another man who is not you are you hearing what i'm saying certain men certain men It was the wine presser that told the king, he said, I know my wrongs this day. There is a man, oh, there is a man. Many of us have sharpened our spiritual potentials. You have sharpened your leadership potentials. It's not pride. You know that it's time to break forth. But the distance between you and the next level is that certain man. Lift up your hands. Oh God, where is this certain man? Let him come into my life. Come on, pray one more time.
pray. It takes one man to change your business. One man to change your ministry. One man. One man. Hallelujah. Listen to me. There are many of you here with great business ideas. Hallelujah. All you need is capital. You have done everything you should do. You need somebody to believe in you enough. Hallelujah. Listen. Truly, the race is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. One man can announce what God is doing in your life. And bring to your life men who have been designed to honor it. I shared that scripture. To none of the widows in Israel was the prophet sent. God sent that to the one who could see his difference and honor him. Many of you have been in a place. You have potentials for the throne. But something is tying you down. Because you are hanging around people who cannot see what God is doing in your life. Is God speaking to someone here? There are many of our parents with their qualifications. They should never have to beg. Even if, you, if the cost of living on earth is one million per day, they should not be begging. But they need one man to announce them. One man to recommend them. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Because this is somebody's prayer request. Oh Lord, if somebody can believe in my business enough to pump even if it's just 100,000 there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us in ministry here. We are great people. This ministry you see today, we enjoy recommendations. Mysterious recommendations. While I was coming, somebody was trying to call me again and again from the UK. And he was saying, man of God, don't ask me how I got to find out about you and have your number. He said, when a man is in trouble, he will look for help anyhow. Are you getting my point? While you are sitting down to sleep, somebody is waking others to talk about you. But you must activate it. It doesn't happen by magic. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many professors and doctors being underutilized because there is a system that cannot honor what they carry. There are many of you who graduated with excellent results. You've even added masters. And the king sent for Joseph. Somebody must send for you to leave the level that you are. And I prophesy, whoever should send for you in the name that is above all names. Listen, listen. There is a man of God, a popular man of God. I will not mention names. The man had the gift of God like whatever but nothing could announce that grace are you hearing what I'm saying people needed his anointing and his gift but nobody could announce it and then something happened one day he entered a taxi true story when he entered a taxi the Holy Spirit told him sow a seed of 30,000 naira to the driver and he didn't have much and he told the driver take and he sowed that seed Ah, the driver looked at him. He said, what will I give you? He said, nothing. He said, sir, can I collect your number? And he collected his number. Please listen to me. This is a true story. When he collected his number, the guy dropped. He said, Tom, may God bless you. He was feeling bad. He did not know that that was his moment of victory. Listen, the very next person that will enter that car, listen, they were part of the regional organizers of Redeem, the convention in UK. Are you getting me? One of the regions. And then the man was talking and said, Kai, we are looking for a man of God to complete the ministers we are bringing. And we need men of integrity, you know. And the driver said, sir, there was a man that gave me his number. This guy is a true man of God. And that was it. I'm serious. They called him and they said, sorry, we are from this, this region of Redeem. I tell you, they brought that man after that ministration. There were so many men of God that he never would have been able to see. Are you getting my point? They all called him and said, we'd like you to come and, and minister. 
Mike Mudok met a young man who was very gifted. Gifted, but there was nothing working in his life. And Mike Mudok looked at him and came. And he said, God told me to bless you. He wrote 17 letters to different ministries and said, this is an anointed man. Please open doors for him. And the guy got 17 invitations. Everybody. It does not take time to change your story. What looks like a mountain is in the pocket of another person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you tired of praying? Are you tired of praying? Because we must call them for. I don't want to waste your time. Let me just share it. I don't know if you shared his testimony. Did you share your testimony, Erima? I'm not sure he shared his testimony. Maybe at an appointed time, but let me say a bit of it. What ambassador? Eh? Unilever. This come. He just came back today. We met together at the airport in Abuja and then we came back together. By the grace of God, are you getting my point? And by the ministry of just one great man, Prof. Hallelujah. He has been selected as the ambassador of Unilever Nigeria. Are you, listen, listen, listen. The race is not to the swift. They just came back from their training in Lagos. And we even bombed. I was waiting for my luggage and I just saw him. And they had told me, he called me in Lagos and he said he was around. We never met. How God can change a man's story. My father worked for more than 10 or 15 years as assistant director of engineering. There was no man to lift him. His genius were rising and they, they, they just trampled this man. And it so happened that one man who used to be his junior, he, when, when we went for crusade in 2006, six years, he was the one who interpreted for me. And he was also the one who interpreted for Renard Bonke when he came to Joss. He was that man. On account of the kindness, he went and said one or two things about my father. And when they went to my father's um, CV and all of that, they said, where has this man been? They said, immediately, he should leave Joss and report to Lagos. He has been there for three years now. Many of us are praying, Lord, take me to the next level. I'm telling you the secret. You need a man. Hear me. There are things you cannot do for yourself. You may be anointed, but your grace will remain there until a man can announce. You may have a great business, a multi-million and billion dollar business, but it takes one man to believe in you and announce you. Are you getting my point? I know one of my friends. He was my classmate. Very intelligent and brilliant guy. This guy finished, furthered his education. There was nobody to speak for him. And this guy kept struggling for years. Nobody to speak for him. And one day I, I prayed. I said, oh Lord, but help this guy. This guy has paid the price. Look, when I say, I, I think I will classify him as a genius. And I'm not telling a lie. But I know other people, before they even finish service, the road has been made plain. You need someone in your life. Please pray and say, oh God, send this man that can believe in me and announce what you have invested in my life. Please pray. Send a man to change my music ministry, oh God. Send a man. Send a man into my family. Koinonia, pray, we are rounding up. Sopotopata. Send a man. Send a man. Send a man. Send a man into my life. Pray for your business. Pray for your job. One recommendation is all you need. One man who can believe in you. Struggling continues until there is a voice that can speak for you. Struggling continues until there is a man that can believe in you and invest in your grace. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. I want to prophesy into your life. I truly believe that this miracle service will bring remarkable results.
Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. As much as possible, if you can stand, stand inside and outside. Has thou commanded thy money? This system of God's kingdom does not work without it being activated. Hallelujah. Don't get too familiar that every miracle service we are speaking, there is something that is happening. Hallelujah. We are entering the eighth month. And I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I prophesy right now, whoever needs to come into anyone's life for the next dimension of their lives to open up, I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus. I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus. I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus. Business help us. Ministry help us. Marriage help us. Anyone called jobless in this place. In the name that is above all names. We command by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let doors of job be open right now. Let it be open right now. Anyone called Barry. 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 In the name that is above all names. We provoke fruitfulness. We provoke fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Anything in your life that is dying, business, ministry, potentials, your gift, your ideas, your proposals, your letters, your visions, your dreams, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I command that let there be life, 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 life. Life to that dry boat. Hallelujah. Everything that represents tragedy and disfavor in your life, that it keeps working for others until it gets to your turn, in the name that is above all names, may supernatural doors of favor be open right now. Hallelujah. I want to pray for your finance. The Lord is leading me to do this. As many of you who believe it. Please can you hold a seed in your hand. Get a seed. For some of you it may be a sacrificial seed. If you don't believe it. Just, just forget about it. We don't cajole people. We don't tell lies. I want to speak into your finances. Hallelujah. Please lift it up. Is a prayer and a duty that God will come through in every area of our lives. But let me tell you something. It will take a seed to open up the heavens. Just leave the hands. Leave the hands. I want to rebuke the devourer. For some of you, this is for you a seed of mercy to speak over your non tithing for some of you this is a seed of wisdom to open you up to ideas of wealth for some of you this is a seed of open heavens a seed of breakthrough just lift it up lift it up Hallelujah. the lord is showing me 11 people the fire of god is coming on your seed from your hand 11 people 11 people right now Lord, let your power move. Let them know that this is not just a conjuring of men. Eleven people. Eleven people. Super Yatamba. Let that seed be salted with fire. We give it a voice in the realm of the spirit. Please lift it up. Let me speak. With this seed, higher, 
the power of God is moving because poverty poverty is one thing that God hates don't ever let anybody convince you that God is the author of lack and poverty your seed your seed is the key to getting out of this level trust me this is not a financial gimmick father right now with this seed in the mighty name of jesus every spirit of poverty goodness goodness how could we have ended this service without prophesying look at spirits i see it in the spirit there is an exit of wicked forces tying people's finances father in the name of jesus we release by the mystery of divine supply let there be abundance now let there be abundance now everything that has tied your financial life and that of your family we contend together as a family that it must be released in the name of jesus go ahead and drop the seed and pray in tongues quickly please we are rounding up please quickly ushers let's save time Many of you will experience breakthroughs, mighty breakthroughs. Lift your hands. We are not done, please. We're out of time. We have to hurry up. Please make sure you drop something. Make sure a seed leaves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep the hands lifted. The ushers will get to you. But please... There is somebody outside. Ah, a mighty manifestation. The spirit of poverty is being broken outside. Outside, just lift your hands, please. I know we're out of time. Just give me one minute. You don't need to bring the people. Outside, just keep the, the hands lifted. Father, whoever those people are, let the fire of God locate them right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Poverty be broken. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Hallelujah. Say the blessing of the Lord is my inheritance. Say the blessing of the Lord is my inheritance. And through my giving, I access that inheritance. Father, no, I'm praying for you now every limitation over anyone's life may that limitation fall now and every destiny helper that needs to come into your life to bring your life partner to bring your business partner to bring to connect you with graces in the name of jesus we release them into your life hallelujah give jesus praise Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Let me make an altar call very quickly right now. There are many of us here, you have never given your heart to the Lord. Please listen, inside and outside. We've never truly made that commitment to Jesus. Some of us have given our hearts to the Lord, but we have found ourselves derailing. And tonight, God is calling you home. Wherever you are, please leave your seat and come right now celebrate them they are coming celebrate them don't wait for anybody jump up on your feet and come outside wherever you are god is talking to you and saying you need to make your your ways right with jesus please come god bless you god bless you god bless you don't wait for anybody don't wait for anybody don't be ashamed i know there are a number of people outside jesus is calling you to make your ways right Jesus is calling you. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Keep coming. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Take my everything. Use me for your glory. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I make up my mind to walk with the Spirit of God. 
I denounce sin, I denounce Satan, and I receive the grace of God to live a victorious Christian life. Father, I pray for these ones. Bless them, anoint them, use them. May their decisions last. May their decisions be true. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the usher. Follow the usher and he's going to lead you. Hallelujah. Now, while I take the announcement, if this is your first time of worshiping with us, I'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here. We want to bless and speak a word of prophecy over you. God bless you. We celebrate you. Outside, no matter how far you are, come. Come, encourage them, Koinonia. Encourage them. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. Come on, Koinonia. This is not the best. We are grateful people in this house. We are grateful people. He brought them by the finger of God. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Thank you so much for making our time to come. Hallelujah. We honor you. We celebrate you. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. This is our miracle service. We are here every Friday and God is building us. We want to pray and prophesy into your life right now. I want you to believe it because you will see the hand of God. The Bible says, who has believed our report? And to whom the hand of the Lord has been stretched. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and let's bless them. They came because they believed that God will step into their lives. Stretch your hands. We prophesy over every aspect of your life. God is coming through for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever challenge you came here with, we are assuring you that you will not return with it. We bless you with hunger for the things of God. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with love for God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you with the favor of God. You are like a well-watered garden. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you be mightily used of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you once again for coming. Please, I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your details. They'll welcome you very briefly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.